Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today I'm going to talk about problem set 1 file extensions of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. So if you have any question about programming or the career, schedule a 3 30 minute session with us, the link's in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already finished the assignment and want to have an alternative view on the problem. All right, we do not support plagiarism. So let's see how is this problem here. So basically, we're going to create a file to implement a program that prompts the user for the name of a file and then output that file's media type if the file names and case insensitive if in any of these suffixes. So we're gonna check if our file finishes with GIF, JPEG, JPG, PNG, PDF, TXT, ZIP. All right, so we have to check the, all those cases. So let's see here the demo. So basically, we're going to prompt this file name that we can see in here, and the user is going to type in the name of the file, and depending on the end of this extension, we're gonna print what is the file extension, all right? So I already did here the pseudocode. Basically, what are the steps we have to do? So, and I saw, I forget here, rpng, all right? So what are the steps we have to do in here? We have to get the user in. Input, all right, then we have to remove spaces and make it all lower because he's complaining about we need to do case insensitive. Then we're going to check uh, the uh, each, each type, all right? And then I'm gonna explain how can we know what we're gonna output in each type. So to begin, let's take a look at the input function. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal, the user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will start Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So now that we saw this explanation, let's start creating here our variable, all right? So I'm gonna make a variable called find name, okay? Because this is what we're gonna receive from the user. And I'm gonna use input with an argument here. Do you see that he's expecting us to receive a file space name? So we're gonna use this, okay? So I'm gonna say input and here file name, all right? And if we take a look, if we try it out, let me see the CD extensions. Python extensions.py and here it's appearing file name. Here they have a colon so I'm gonna add a colon as well to make it exactly like they are expecting us to have. All right and here if I put cat.gift it won't happen anything because we have to create this logic but it's working the input, all right? So now let's start understanding how we can use if and else conditions, all right? And then we can continue implementing our code. So take a look at this explanation. Python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs. An if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false. If a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is storing the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else, printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not met. They appear after a Python if statement and before an else statement. You can use as many elif statements as you want. 
now that we've learned elif, let's improve the previous code with an elif statement. Let's add one more condition where we want to check if the number is less than zero. In this case, we would write elif x, the operator less, and the number zero. If this condition is true, we will print negative numbers only. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value minus 5. The if condition won't be true because minus 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif block. Now we're going to check if this elif condition is true. Since minus 5 is less than 0, we will print negative numbers only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. Let's do another example, making the variable x hold the value 5. In this case, the if condition won't be true because 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif condition. Again, this elif condition won't be true because 5 is not less than 0. Then we will skip the elif block and go go to the else condition. In this else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. So now that we understood how if and else condition works, now we're going to start creating here our conditions to know what we're going to print, all right? So where we know what we should print? If you click here in this hyperlink that they are giving to us, all right, we can see we're going to enter in this page. And here we have a table where we can see all the kind of documents that exist and the meme type we're going to print, okay? So for example, text here, we know that is we're going to print to text plain. If it's a default value, we're going to do this application for slash octet stream. If we want to look here, for example, we can see a uh, GIF. GIF it's image for slash GIF. We know that JPEG is the same, like PDF is application for slash PDF. PNG is image for slash PNG. So take a look at this table. It's going to give you what is the, whatever you have to type to output, all right, depending on the extension. I already did here this is scheme all right so i put here if gif or png or jpeg or, or G, jpn pg we're gonna print image for slash and the name of the extension if it's a pdf or a zip we're gonna print application for slash and the type of of the extension if it's a txt we're gonna print txt plain and otherwise we're gonna print this application octet stream all right this is basically it so now we have to see the following we're gonna receive the name of the file dot and the extension and we have to check here the same thing as we did for the previous project the bank